How can we open up for God's love? In the mind and the heart uh, need to work together for us to be able to um, be successful in life. Uh, many times when we are faced with a question, uh, we're always saying, my heart wants me to do this, but my mind wants me to do something else. And then there's a conflict. And wherever there's a conflict, and there's going to be uh, stress. And wherever there's stress and strain, uh, there's commotion. And wherever there's commotion, then we can't still ourselves. And so our spiritual practices uh, are hurt. And so uh, this is why the saints have said that our mind and our heart need to be in unison so that uh, both of them are geared in the same direction and are not creating a conflict within ourselves uh, which starts to bring turmoil into our lives. If you are using um, your mind to deal with the pains of the heart and try to find a solution that way, the pains of the heart are all emotional pains. So if you use the mind to uh, deal with the emotional pains, similarly you can use the mind to deal with the spiritual pains. You know, pains of the heart come in, emotional pains come in when we have trouble with our friends, relatives, people that we know in the physical world, people that we are close to uh, physically. And so when there's uh, any disturbance in that relationship, then we are pained. Yeah. Similarly, uh, when we start to think about spirituality and we realize a separation from the Creator, from God, and, and we recognize that we are unable to fathom the separation then pain starts to come at the spiritual level. And so the saints have very uh, beautifully described it, that to be able to deal with the, the spiritual pains, we need to befriend the mind, just like we need to befriend the mind to deal with our physical pains. And so, so how do you befriend the mind? You need for the mind which maybe works on reasoning to be able to understand that it's away from its home also. And so the saints, as Sandarshan Singh Maharaj would often say, uh, tell us that we need to convince the mind that its home is also not this physical world that this home is in the third region, that it needs to reach its home. It needs to reach the area from where it was created. And so as we are able to convince the mind to be focused on um, traveling through the spiritual region, through the third region, then it would help our soul also to be able to go along. So together, as, as the mind and the soul gets to be in unison, they'll be able to not only read the third plane, and then our soul, our real self, can keep on going further. Because by then, the mind would have been at its home, where it would be happy, and it would not want us to be distracted from reaching our goals too. For us to be more open to God, we need to be close to God. And for us to be close to God, uh, we need to be able to meditate. And for us to be able to meditate, we need to still the mind. And to still the mind, we do Simran. Simran is a, uh, are the names, that the charred names, which are given to us at the time of our holy initiation so that we are able to, um, to still the mind. The mind is very active. It's always doing something. It could be 
uh, in one arena, let's say it's uh, focused on the studies, and the next thing it could be focused on the entertainment, and the third moment it could be traveling to another part of the world. So the mind is very active and can go from one arena to another very quickly. And, and as it's going from one arena to another, thoughts are coming through the mind. And the thoughts are what are distracting us from being able to get to our goals. So the, the saints have suggested that let's take the power of the mind and focus it towards the direction where we really want to go, which is God. And so they give us these names of God which they charge with their attention at the time of a holy initiation. So that when we repeat them, our attention is in God, our attention is in the right arena, so that the mind then is spending all this energy to, to do Simran, which is repetition of the holy names of God and is unable to send thoughts to us and it's in that state of quietness of the mind because the quietness of the body is very easy to sit down close our eyes withdraw five senses is very easy the difficulty is quietening the mind so in the quietness of the body and the quietness of the mind in the harmony of both of them there we then are able to go on the spiritual journey and so uh, the key is to be able to still our mind if we want to open ourselves to God, if we want to be close to God, if we want to be one with God. How can we ensure accuracy in our meditation technique? You know, when we uh, look at the activities that we do on a daily basis, we find that we do things very accurately. Those of you who brush your teeth every day, you brush them quite well. You know, if those of you who floss your teeth every day, I mean, you floss it very nicely. If you take a bath or a shower every day, you do a good job. You know, if um, you're eating, uh, which we all do a few times a day, then you do a good job at it. I mean, clean the plate up. <laughs> if you're eating chips or snacks, I don't leave anything in the bag. Those who are used to just eating out of the bag. When we go to work, uh, you know, every time we learn what work we're supposed to do and we do a good job there. We come home and we want to watch TV, we do a very good job there too. Nothing distracts us. If we're a child, our parents could be calling us, we don't hear anything, we're focused on whatever is going on, right? So then what is the difficulty in meditation? Because the, the steps in meditation are very simple. First is find a quiet place to meditate. So that's easy to do. You can find a quiet place. Second is that most people sit down by themselves, even though there are more than one person sitting together. Don't touch anyone, which is easy to do. Um, don't change the atmosphere, that's easy. You don't have to go out and get anything to spray some around there or something. Don't eat and then closing your eyes. I mean, we all sleep every night, we do a good job. So those five things are very easy to do. Yeah. The difficulty comes from the mind, as we were just talking about. So the key is to be able to focus the mind on God properly. You know, many of us psychologically take the spiritual eye to be between and behind the two eyebrows and we raise our eyeballs up. So one of the things to be careful is to make sure that our eyeballs are straight because these eyeballs are not what are watching the lights within. These eyes are just to watch everything in the world outside. The reason we close them is so they don't distract us. So any movement in front of us is not distracting us. What we're experiencing is with our inner eye. So I think one of the techniques that can be used in the beginning is to make sure that your eyes are 
in the horizontal plane if you're sitting and meditating. And to do that, I would say, if you if you sit down wherever you may tear, let's say you're sitting on a chair, and let's say you're close to a wall, uh, you know, five, six feet away, and just put like a little spot on the wall at the same height as your eye level, and look at it for a minute or so, close your eyes, and do this for about 30 days, and then you don't have to do it. Then you'll get used to having your eyes be in that horizontal plane. And after that, it's a question of Simran, repeating the Simran during the day to be able to uh, have our Simran run properly so that our mind is not sending thoughts to us. So the whole key to, to meditation is Simran. And the more we practice the Simran, the more we spend time in repeating these names during the day when we're not doing any mental activity, you know, there are many things. You might be cooking in the house, you're driving, you're doing all kinds of things. So doing Simran is good. And and as as we do the Simran during the day, so when we meditate, whether we meditate in the morning or night or in the afternoon, then the Simran starts to work properly so that we can get to a state where the thoughts are getting less and less and less. And so those are the keys to be able to... Uh, to meditate accurately. One is to make sure that the body is uh, stress-free. So don't raise your eyes up, don't uh, put any stress on the face, just be totally relaxed. Second is to make sure that your Simran is going properly. And so the more we practice the Simran, the better we are. And, and, and you know, this happens to most of us, the thoughts will come in. But then we need to, with practice, go and, and make sure that the thoughts are not there. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can play with the gap in the repetition of the words. And, and the gap that you have is a little different for everyone. So we all need to fine tune ourselves. If the gap is too small, that's not very good. If it's too big, that's not very good. So we need to get to something that works for us, in which uh, with practice, uh, we get to a state where we will be repeating the Simran at, at the right rate and, and be able to soar into the inner regions. So uh, those, I think, are the keys to uh, meditate accurately. How can we show our love for God? I would say the best way of uh, showing love to God is to be able to appreciate God and to be grateful to God for the gifts that we have in our own life. If, if we were to take um, an example of a family with children, uh, we know as parents, we buy many gifts for the kids, toys, nowadays maybe electronic gadgetry and so when we buy a gift for a child and if the child all of a sudden say they what is this i i don't like it or you know i should have gotten something else then as parents we get very distraught because we've done our very best to give them what we think will make them happy but then if we give them something that they really like and we see them happy with it and and they're grateful that they got it and they, they they look very happy they seem very happy they want to play with the gift or use the gift then as parents we feel very satisfied so i think it's the same thing uh, with god and us so god gives us um, tremendous amounts of uh, gifts and so when we, when we get those gifts, if we appreciate that in our life, so how do you appreciate the gifts of God? By showing your gratitude to God. So it's an attitude of gratitude which makes God happy. It's an attitude in life that everything that comes to us is a gift of God. Sometimes to us it might seem to be difficult. But then, 
we realize that even though it seemed difficult, that was the right thing to happen, whether we realize it in a few hours or a few days or a few months or a few years. And so this attitude of, of being grateful to God uh, is what is needed. And, and Sandarshan Singh Ji Maharaj very beautifully put it in one of his verses. He says, Nafaz, Nafaz, Mujhe Lazim Hai, Shukr Ka Sajda, Ki Mere Dost Ka Aisa Hai, Zindagi Meri. And he's saying that with every breath, I'm grateful to my friend, which is to God. And it is because of God that I have this life. You know, our soul could have been transmigrating in any one of the 8.4 million of species. So it's a gift of God that we have this life. And then it's another gift of God that having gotten this life, that we are focused on God. And it's God's gift that through the grace of the spiritual masters, that we are able to be able to go on the journey back to God. We are able to appreciate the gifts of God in our lives. We are able to love God with all our might. And so to be grateful to God for this existence, to be grateful to God, to have an opportunity to know God, to be grateful to God, to be able to sit down and meditate and experience the two primal manifestations of God, that being the divine light and sound of God, to be able to get to the radiant form of the spiritual master within, which becomes our inner guide. These are all things that we should be grateful to God. And also, God is happy when we return back to God, just like uh, a father or parents are happy if their children have gone out someplace and they come back home. Then, then the parents feel very happy. So God wants us to be back with God. And so when we meditate, when we are putting in efforts for our spiritual well-being, when we are putting ethics into our life, becoming more ethical, when we are taking steps so that we are able to, to know God, that also is a way of showing love for God. Because God wants us to be with God. This is why we've been given this human birth. And so God has given us this opportunity. But, but God um, eh, doesn't need any materialistic gift from us. You know, it's not like we buy something for God or we say, I'm going to do these many penances for you and that I'm going to be fasting for so many days for you, oh God. You know, the key is the sincerity of our effort by which we are taking steps to meet God. And the key is the sincerity in our, in our being able to be grateful to God. So I think if we are grateful to God for our life, for, for whatever we have, for, for us to be able to uh, uh, be on a spiritual path, for us to be able to experience the true primal manifestations of God and to be able to take the spiritual journey. And these are things to be grateful to God. And this is why Sandarshan Singh Ji Maharaj is saying that with every breath I am grateful to God. Because those who love God at each and every moment of their life, they're grateful to God for whatever they have. We don't know what a past karma is. We don't know what has to play out in our life. So those who have the right understanding, they realize that everything that happens to us is under God's will. God is the creator and God created everything. So they realize that. And, and so they then uh, are grateful to God at each and every moment of their life. And that is showing love for God. So let us meditate for a few minutes. Close your eyes very gently. Just like you close them when you go to sleep. Your eyebrows should be straight. Focus 8 or 10 inches in front of you. And as you close your eyes, those of you who have been initiated in the mysteries of the beyond, uh, please do your simran. And those of you who are new here, uh, please repeat any name of God that you feel comfortable with. This repetition of God's name should be done mentally and not out loud.
right in front of you with time, light will sprout forth. It will look like circles of light, it will look like flashes of light. Light could be seen as coming and going. Just keep your attention in the middle of the experience. And with time to you, the light will stabilize. What is actually happening is that the light of God is within each and every one of you. As you concentrate, you experience the light. As you're distracted, you experience darkness. And so with time, you'll be experiencing more and more of the divine light within. And then, as the concentration gets better and better and better, many other vistas will open up. And some lucky few of us will be able to get to the radiant, to the form of the spiritual master. If we get there, please focus in the eyes of the radiant form. And then whatever is right is the journey that will be going on. So I pray to God Almighty and to the three great spiritual masters of the past century, Hazur Baba Savan Singh Ji Maharaj, Param Singh Kipal Singh Ji Maharaj, and Dhyal Purush Sandarshan Singh Ji Maharaj, to help each and every one of us connect with the divine power within and to experience the divine light in his effulgence. I will be sitting for a few minutes. I'll be getting you out of this meditative state at that time. And my best wishes are with each and every one of you.
please leave off.